In this video, we'll look at how to get started using the DevExpress Blazor upload component. Both DevExpress Blazor DX file input and DX upload components allow you to handle file upload. The main difference is that the file input allows you to access and process file contents directly in Razor code, whereas the upload component packs file contents into an AJAX request and sends this request to the controller where the file is processed. I've already created a Blazor application that's configured to use DevExpress components. DX upload does not support static render mode, so I enable interactivity on this page. Now we'll implement an upload controller. I create the controllers folder and add an empty controller. In the controller, I implement an action that processes the uploaded file. I do not include the full implementation of the upload controller to maintain the highest possible security posture. Instead, I added a link to a Microsoft help topic into the video description. In this topic, you can find controller code for different upload scenarios. To map the controller, I open the program.cs file and call the map controllers method. Now I'm going to add DX upload and connect it to the server. For clarity, I place the controller code next to the page code. I open the index page, add the upload component to the markup, and set up the name property so that it matches the name of the controller actions parameter. Then I assign the action path to the upload URL property. Okay, let's run the app and see the result. Instead of defining the controller in the same application, you can implement a controller in a separate web API project. If the controller and upload component reside on different servers, you need to enable cross-origin requests. Otherwise, web browsers do not allow these applications to communicate. Now I'll show you how to enable CORS for a web API application. I've already created an ASP.NET Core Web API application and added an upload controller to it. I open the program.cs file specify the CRS policy name, and call the addCRS method to apply this policy. Then I call the useCRS method to add the CRS middleware. After that, I open the upload controller and apply the CRS policy to it. In case I deploy this application on an IIS web server, I add a web.config file and enable CRS in it. Now I update the upload component's upload URL and run both applications to see the result. As you can see, DX Upload and Upload Controller are successfully exchanging requests. You can find links to CORS policy best practices in the video description. Now I'm going to implement client and server side validation. First, I specify max file size and allowed file extensions properties to validate file size and extension on the client. Next, I create a controller action that validates file size and extension on the server. To introduce secure file upload operations, we recommend that you add different validation types to upload controller code. For example, validate the file name, limit file size, limit file name length, and restrict allowed characters. If using a real file system, check whether the file is within the expected root directory. Validate file extensions and manage allowed extensions. Refer to the description below for more validation best practices. Now let's see how validation works. As you can see, validation fails if I try to upload a docx file or a file larger than four megabytes. The upload component can split large files into small packets and send them to the server in multiple requests one by one. To enable chunk upload, I create a new controller action. This action gets the chunk metadata from a form variable and deserializes it. Then I remove the file size limitation and assign the packet size to the chunk size property. Once I update the upload URL, I run the app to see the result. and the component uploads the selected file in multiple chunks. Now I'm going to allow users to upload multiple files at once. 
For this purpose, I enable the Allow Multi-File Upload property and set the Max File Count property to 3. The Select Button Text property customizes the Select File button's text. Now the component allows users to upload up to three files at once. DX Upload uploads files once a user selects them. I set the Upload Mode property to On Button Click to upload files after the user clicks the Upload button. I can click an individual file's Upload button to upload this file, or click the Common button to upload all files. Users can cancel file upload in the UI. In Chunk Upload Mode, Users can also pause and resume upload operations. To hide cancel and pause buttons, I set the allow cancel and allow pause properties to false. The upload component includes events that allow you to respond to file upload actions. The components methods allow you to manage selected files in code. Now I handle the upload's file upload error event to remove a file whose upload failed from the file list. And as you can see, once I upload a file, its upload operation fails, and the file disappears from the list. Next, I'm going to enable drag and drop in the upload component. I create an external zone where users can drop a file. The zone includes a custom select file button. I assign CSS selectors of the button and zone to external select button CSS selector and external drop zone CSS selector properties. I use the external drop zone drag over CSS class property to change the zone's border once a user drags a file over it. Then I add drop zone styles to the index.razor.css file. I want to hide the upload component when the file list is empty. For this purpose, I handle the selected files changed event and set the visible property value based on the selected file count. Let's run the app and see the result. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified anytime we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.